Hello again, everyone, and I appreciate you tuning in uh, to my series of videos on the Holly Terminator X software. I apologize for not making more regular updates, but I've had a quite a busy summer and just recently finished a big, long road trip from Alabama to Chicago in my Cougar. We're in the middle of it. I actually did a cam swap, so it was... Uh, Pretty cool, got to visit some friends um, and then made it home to Alabama. So in the last videos, we went over the basic software, the basic ICFs that you see here. Uh, the next logical step would be to take you through the fuel and the spark ICFs. But before I got into those ICFs specifically, I wanted to talk about things that, uh, or about something that that I see very few people talking about, and that's properly scaling the load axes and the RPM axes for your particular application. So what am I talking about? Let's take a look. This is actually a config file for my buddy Tom, his GTO. It's a 400 some cubic inch stroker engine, LS based obviously, with a pretty mild cam. So let's take a look here. This is the fuel table for this particular application and we have not changed the axes on this particular configuration from the default that gets generated by the wizard if you're using the handheld so what i mean by my what i mean by scaling the axes is that most people don't even realize that these numbers on the axes so here on the y axis you have uh, the load which is displayed in kpa and obviously on the x-axis is the RPM. So from on, the, on this particular config, it goes from 500 RPM to 7,000 RPM. And if you look here, um, it starts off in 100 RPM increments down low, then it goes by 200. Once you get into above 2,000, it goes by up by 250. Um, and that's pretty much how it stays here, all the way to 7,000 RPM. And the load axis goes up by three or four KPA per row. So this table is 31, 31 by 31 cells. So 31 columns um, across the bottom and 31 rows ac across the load cells. So these numbers here, um, they're editable. So you can actually click on this number. This says 14. And if you want it to be something else, you simply punch in that number. Let's say 10. Now, this is just an example. Like I said, most people don't understand that these numbers can be edited. Well, why is this important? Well, in this particular case, I know this engine idles very nicely at 42 kPa, which is this row right here, and about 750 RPM, which falls between the 700 and 800 um, columns. So when it's idling, um, the little highlighted area that lights up, it's somewhere in here. Okay, well, what about all these values down here? Do they ever get used? Well, yes, they do. So in Tom's case, his car is a stick, stick shift car. So if he goes to downshift, let's say from, you know, second to, or third to second going to turn, he might be at 3,000 RPM, downshifts, uh, might go up to 4,000 RPM. And of course, with a stick shift car specifically, it's going to pull a lot more vacuum when you're downshifting and the engine is just acting as a big brake, if you would. But even on this mild engine, I know from experience, he's never going to pull anything less than about 20 kPa, which puts us at about this row here. All right. So now what we have are these is this one, two, three, four, five, six rows that hardly ever get used. And it's in an area of a map where it's not really ever critical to have those values there. Because if you ever fall, you know, some people ask, well, what if I rev past 7,000 RPM? Well, the, it's not the end of the world. It's not like the computer is going to shut off. What happens in that case, let's say you go up to 7,200 RPM for just a moment. Whatever value was in this last cell, it would simply carry it over. And in the case of fuel, it's really not that critical. You might run over just a little bit, whatever. You're going to be shifting anyway. 
So what happens here, so in this case, since we know that this engine is probably never going to pull more than um, uh, or less than 20 kPa even on a, on a big downshift, we can repurpose these lower rows. So it would make sense to add resolution in the rows that we're actually using and get rid of the rows or the rows on the bottom that we're not. So it would actually make sense to start to scale maybe at 15 kPa and then scale it up accordingly. Now, when you punch the numbers in, it does want to automatically rescale, but you really want to give this some thought as you go up. You know, so using units of three, so we can go from 15 to 18, go up, then we say we want to go to 22, um, 25, and so on and so forth. And that will essentially rescale this, um, this load axis to give us more resolution in the areas that we actually are using when we're driving the vehicle. Right, because when you're just driving around, especially in a street car, you're in this meaty zone right here. You're moderate throttle, you know, 3,000 RPM max, maybe 3,500, whatever. You're right in here, so it makes sense to add resolution in those cells because that's where you're driving the most. Now you also see this upper column uh, or upper row. This goes to 105 kPa. Um, naturally aspirated, I would be ve very hard pressed to envision a situation where you actually do get to 105 kPa. When maybe if you're racing, you know, in a really cool day, you know, fall, really good air, you might see it. I would be inclined to even get rid of this row and just stop it at 102, um, and then scale it accordingly. All right. Now you wanna do the same thing with the RPM. Now here in this particular case, it, it is scaled in a way that I think is very appropriate. So at the low end, at idle, it, the, the columns go up by 100 RPM, you know, until you get to about 1200. That makes a lot of sense for idle because this being a mild engine, you can kind of see, you know, if you take off from a light and you drag the, um, the clutch, you let it out a little too fast, you can envision it dipping below the idle speed, so down to 600, maybe even 500, and then as you start driving, it would go up. And then here, the RPM axis goes up to 7,000. Okay, well, what if you don't have an engine that you ref to 7,000? Again, you want to scale this RPM, the x-axis, according to your particular engine combination. Maybe you have a relatively stock engine that you're not revving much past 6,000. Well, why are you wasting all these columns and all this resolution going all the way up to 7,000 when you can easily adjust it to according to what you want? Now, here's some gotchas. So whatever you scale this for fuel, you obviously want to scale it for your spark table. And keep in mind, it doesn't do this automatically. So you have to go here. I would suggest writing down whatever values you enter here. I would write them down one by one so you know exactly what you have. Then go over to the spark table and make sure it matches. The other gotcha is, well, let's say you already have a pretty decent tune and you went and rescaled it. Obviously, all the numbers are going to be all the numbers in the table itself are going to be slightly off. For fuel, uh, this isn't really a big deal because once you start driving the car, the learn function in the Holly EFI will sort of repopulate the cells and you just take the, the learn table, transfer it to base, and you can be back up and running to a very nice tune very quickly. With the spark table, you want to be a little bit careful because if you do rescale the load scale, uh, the load scale, you really just want to go back and make sure that um, nothing funny is happening, and you didn't put timing where you, you you wanted to, or now it's got more timing in in a place that you don't want, or whatever. In this particular case, Tom is just using just for now that this car is just getting on the road. We're just using the simple option where we're not populating the table, so all it's asking for and using is the value at idle you know, sort of cruise and then wide open. 
right? Once we start dialing this in on the dyno, we're going to switch to the 2D table and we're going to start filling in these numbers inside. But again, that's not what we're talking about in this video. I really just wanted to talk about the load axis and the RPM axis and the fact that they can be rescaled and they should be rescaled in according to what your engine actually is doing. Because the other thing that we didn't talk about is obviously forced induction where your load axis is not going to go from zero to 100, but it might go to zero to 200. And that's a whole other topic. You know, where do you want that resolution? Do you want it in boost? Do you want it out of boost? Uh, I have some thoughts on that, but that's beyond the scope of this video. I just wanted to show that these scales, again, are editable. You're not locked into these numbers. This is just what the Holly Wizard populates um, these axes with these numbers, and they can be changed. And once you get the car up and running, they should be changed. Thanks for watching. If you like this video, please like and subscribe, and I will do my best to make the next video available much quicker. Thanks again.